So hi, everyone. Uh, thanks again for, for tuning in to another uh, one of our founder chats. I'm joined here uh, by Bruce uh, from uh, the co-founder and MD of FutureX, um, who are on a mission to redefine the role of business. In 2001, Bruce started his first business, We Are the Future, uh, at age at the ripe old age of, of 17 from a high school uh, classroom in Scotland with a mission to inspire and connect entrepreneurs from around the world. Uh, over five years, they worked with over 5,000 entrepreneurs delivering global summits and programs in Edinburgh, London, Berlin, San Francisco, Chicago, Los Angeles, Abu Dhabi, Hong Kong, Shenzhen, where the heck did you not go? Partnering with uh, global brands uh, along the way. In 2017, at the ripe old age of 23, um, he co-founded FutureX uh, with a mission to redefine the role of business again. Um, he's also one of the organizers of the Startup Summit each year in Edinburgh and has won numerous awards, including the Young Entrepreneur of the Year. So Bruce, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me today. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, I think it's 2001, when it was 2011. I, I oh, I, I yeah. Seven in 2001, which would have been very impressive. It's, that, that, not, that, that makes me even more upset uh, <laughs> to understand how old you would have been in 2001. Anyway, I apologize. Um, so, uh, I didn't kind of go into this in the bio, but um, I, I, uh, describing what FutureX actually is. And um, so maybe you could do that for me. What is, a, what is FutureX? So I, I view us as, as a community, really, a community of, of purpose-driven entrepreneurs who are building scalable, profitable solutions to um, whether it is cultural challenges, societal, environmental, um, and it's not just about what you do, it's about how you do it. That's really what our community is all about. It's about promoting a way of doing business, which is purpose-driven, that looks after people, um, that considers the culture within your organization, how you treat people. Um, and so we come together at uh, two big international summits a year, uh, the Startup Summit, which is all about tooling up the entrepreneurs to have the very best skills to actually build their businesses. Um, and then the Impact Summit, where we discuss all the kind of challenges that face business and the role that business has in communities, the role that business plays in influencing um, our education system, the way it influences the way that, you know, discourse in the media. And it, it, business has such a fundamental role. And we want to shape that conversation around how do we do better all the time. Um, mm -hmm. We also run a couple of international uh, growth programs where again we, we kind of select a group of, of companies, group of founders and connect them with the Silicon Valley ecosystem where they go visit the top executives, investors, founders and some of Silicon Valley's you know, biggest names. And the idea again behind that is if we want to uh, redefine what the role of business is and if we want to build companies with purpose then those businesses should be uh, resourced with the best advice, with mm -hmm. the best network uh, understanding the latest trends and methodologies. So this isn't just about saying do good and it doesn't matter how you build your business. We fundamentally believe if we can help people build really solid companies at scale, then that's, that's how we're, we're going to make a meaningful impact. So, so picking up on that, um, obviously having the goal of redefining um, kind of the role of business and the type of, of business that people want to create um, uh, you can go about that in a bunch of different ways. And so, and I know that you're a very deliberate person. So I'm sure that there, there are different options out there uh, in terms of uh, approaching that, whether it's through advisory, through developing a single business yourself and then showing the world how it's done, um, getting involved in government programs. So when you were out, um, when you were considering uh, building a FutureX and the way that you wanted to build it, you and your co-founders, um, what different models were you looking at? What different ways were you considering to try and help that ecosystem? And why did you end up settling on the model that you chose? So previously, I, I founded a company called We Are The Future. And that was not very deliberate at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was a, a really wonderful experience, about five years of my life, where I just got to try things, test things. Um, I wasn't really looking with We Are The Future to make a lot of money. I mean, I was in my mm -hmm. late teens, early 20s. It was really just about exploring, testing things, um, and if I could make some money out of it to survive, then that was, mm -hmm. that was good. And so I learned in that process that um, we were being consulted by 
government organisations, we were being brought in by big corporations and being asked <laughs> about uh, the entrepreneur community, what's emerging, what kind of, uh, what are the trends we should look at. And suddenly I found myself in a position of, of advocating on behalf of a community, which, which wasn't by design. So I then realised that actually if you can build a platform, and I kind of see our events as a platform, um, mm -hmm. on one side we have people who want to ultimately improve their business um, and on the other side you've got people who want to service companies and I find if we're able to best curate that marketplace then we can bring in government, we can bring in education, we can bring in big business and it forms this ecosystem around building a kind of better world um, and so some of the other models that, that I've seen um, are I think one of the challenges I find in this space is that when you talk about purpose, people, mm -hmm. in particularly in the UK, they think of social enterprise, not-for-profit, charity. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that that all has a critical role to play in, in the ecosystem, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about building businesses of scale, building businesses that can make money, because there's nothing wrong with making money. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's an essential part of, of the system. Um, but it is the intention in which you make your money that is important to me. Uh, and I think that what I see is companies that get to scale, they can have you know, 100 million users on their platform. Now that can make a profound, a profound impact and make money at the same time. So I think that is the model in which engages most people. Um, when I speak in universities and in high schools, this is a no brainer to, to a lot of the people I, I speak to. This makes complete sense. The thing is, is that most people don't realize still that these types of communities exist. Um, although it's becoming more prevalent, it's still quite niche. Um, and so I feel my objective is to continually try to push this into the mainstream. And in, how then do you turn that passion, that mission into a sustainable business from your, you know, on your side, right? When, when you're saying and, and uh, talking about, you know, it's great to, to uh, make some money um, and uh, and be sustainable. Uh, a lot of the things that you're you're talking about are usually found at the fringes of of people's bandwidth and people's time, and they're they're trying to do things on the side to to move the the ecosystem forward. Um, and you're working by your very nature with very early stage companies often. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you make that into a sustainable business? How do you survive <laughs> with a lot of hard work um, and uh, a bit of uh, innovation, I think, is 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 needed um, in that. I mean, I want us to be an example of a purpose-driven mm -hmm. company. So I take that very seriously. We have a lot of conversations about our culture, how we do things. I, I like to think we've got a very open and challenging environment in our in our team. So you know, we're constantly going. But is that actually in line with our values? And and this is maybe a good time to talk about values for me yeah. because values is. It's like a way of living. It's decision-making model for me. We have a set of values that we adhere to, and that helps us guide us through all our decision-making. And ultimately, it has to be: Am I comfortable making this decision, knowing that this is our, this is what we stand for, and how will yeah. that impact me in the future? So the short-term gain will almost always be <laughs> obliterated in the future if you start to compromise your, your values. And what I see in companies that do this very well is you build up tremendous authenticity um, and trust among your partners, among your customers and your employees, and you build a more resilient business. So for us, uh, you know, we run conferences which have to be profitable. They have to make money. Um, and we do that in, in a super transparent way. We, ch we charge ticket prices, but we subsidize all the ticket prices because, again, as you mentioned, our target market is a group of people who don't have a lot of cash, um, but that, that's who we're looking to serve. Uh, we charge uh, corporates more money to exhibit, and we, uh, we get sponsorship partnership deals with uh, lots of big companies who, again, provide more than just cash value, but they also might provide access to their networks, their supply chains, um, and build a kind of partnership more than just a sponsorship deal. But ultimately, we that's what we do. We, we see, I see ourselves as a marketplace. We have a community of entrepreneurs who want, to, who want to be supported. And we have a community of businesses, support organizations, agencies who want to serve that community. And, and all we do is link them up. 
Okay. And speaking of values, and especially with the companies that you interact with, uh, some people might be thinking that values are a nice to have. And, you know, at the fun fundamental, you just got to make money. And if you can't, can't make money, there's, there's no, no point in, in, in doing business. So what do you say to, to people who, who, who might be watching saying this all sounds great, but you know, uh, that's a luxury I can't afford yet. Yeah. So, I mean, I would say that we don't have our values on the wall. Um, we have not written them up in big, bold writing all over the place. Um, it is a set of things that we practice every day. So it is, it's not a thing that is, you know, you spend a couple of hours doing a workshop coming up with your values and then that is something you put on your website. It, is, it has to be something that you live by. And if you find throughout the process um, that it turns out that this, this value we've come up with doesn't, doesn't work for us, it's no longer applicable, it's okay to change it. It's, it's okay to, these are not things that are fixed in time. So I would say that it's essential because it builds trust, builds authenticity. Um, it helps you find the best talent, helps you retain the best talent if you're authentic with your values. It helps you find customers who really buy into to this. And it, I think what most companies come to realize is that you can't service every single potential customer. So you essentially build a kind of loyal tribe of people who get what you're doing. And you can build that out and build that out and you become more and more authentic over time with that. If you don't do that, I don't think people know what you stand for. And so therefore you can't have the emotional attachment to the business in, in the same way. And it becomes maybe more of a transactional relationship. And as we know, that's not how most people make loyal buying decisions. It has to be an emotional decision. And I think that's what values gives you. Yeah, there's a key business, business point to it. So a lot of, um, I guess what we've talked about is very internal about, about the, the, the makeup of a business, building sustainable businesses, um, making sure that people are connected in, in, the, in the Scottish ecosystem, for example. But another part of FutureX, uh, quite an important part, is an external um, uh, relationships with uh, other countries or, uh, or link-ups with other countries. Um, or entrepreneurs in other countries. So why is that so important? I mean, it's, it's mega important to me. And I think that it, it, I was fortunate that when I was uh, 19, I was invited to go over to uh, San Francisco. And I, I had no money, but I went anyway. And I you know, got the cheapest flight possible. I stayed in this entrepreneur house and it was, you know, I can't remember what it was, 40 bucks a night or something to, to stay there. And, uh, I immediately realized when I got there that the way they did business, the way they operated, the ecosystem was entirely different. And yet the goal was pretty much the same thing. And that really struck a chord with me is that there's a way of working and learning from other communities that is hugely beneficial. And yet they didn't have everything that I loved. There were certain parts of it that I really didn't like. It didn't, didn't really work for me. And then it's the same when I went go to Berlin, it's the same when I go to China is that there are, there's so much to learn from the rest of the world and the way people do business and also the commonality in the way that people operate and behave. And what I find again, when it comes down to being honest and authentic and compassionate with other human beings, that's when you build the best relationships. But if you get stuck inside your own bubble, it is a reinforcing bubble of bullshit. And you have to eventually pop out of that in order to see the world a little bit more clearly. And I think that's what international engagement is all about. It's also, frankly, a sharing of culture, a sharing of ideas, of ways of doing business that I think just enriches your soul. You know, I, I really appreciate when I went over to, um, to China and we spent a couple of weeks doing all these lessons on, you know, Chinese etiquette and business. Uh, I did the same thing when I went to Abu Dhabi. And frankly, that's just good information to have it's good to learn that i think it enriches you as a person and it certainly makes your business um i think more resilient mm -hmm. and then of course critically we live in a global marketplace and if you're building a product for your domestic market it better be a big one <laughs> because in, if you're in scotland you just don't have that luxury five million people you know you have to be thinking about the rest of the world i mean it's just it's just a business essential yeah, absolutely. There's no excuse to, to not know how the rest of the world does business. Um, so uh, just briefly on, on, on Scotland then, um, maybe you and I are slightly biased, but if you can try and be a, as objective as you, as you can, 
why is the Scottish ecosystem just a bit different to other ecosystems in the world from your point of view? I think the, the difference, so Scotland is, I think, quite similar to lots of ecosystems, but different in that it's an entire country. So uh, you know, I see similarities in the ecosystem in, yeah, say, Berlin. Uh, similarities, not, not, not identical. I see similarities in part, I mean, I think a lot of people have tried to emulate elements of Silicon Valley. So I see a little bit of that. But as a country, as an entire nation, it's quite unique because it is so small that people can actually, you can get all the key decision makers uh, around the room, you can have conversations. Accessibility, I think, is quite easy in Scotland. I think that is very, that's, that's really valuable. I think the fact that it is uh, Edinburgh, for example, you know, half a million people live in the city and that's tiny. You know, it's a beautiful place to live. You can pretty much walk everywhere. Public transport is very good. Um, it is relatively affordable uh, compared to you know, other major uh, ecosystems and hubs. Yeah. There is some world-class universities. So there's lots of very good things about it. Um, I think some of the, the downside is um, when we've been building the ecosystem, we, particularly in the in technology space, it has only been the last couple of years we've seen some examples of successful exits. Mm -hmm. And it takes time for that knowledge transfer into the rest of the ecosystem and for talent to, to spread around. You know, I think one of, the, one of the reasons that Silicon Valley is so successful is because like non-competes you know, are unenforceable. And so it's easy to jump between company to company. So the knowledge transfer is constantly going around and that's massive. You know, you go from working from the big companies then into the startup then startup into the, maybe being a VC and then, you know, always moving around. Yeah. I think that we have, we've yet to have enough examples where there is that, that uh, movement happening. I hope once we get there, then uh, we'll start to see change. I would also like to see Scotland, uh, you can be proud of where you are, but, you know, don't be ignorant to the rest of the UK. You know, we're in Edinburgh, we're only a couple of miles away from Newcastle, only a couple of miles away from Manchester. It's four and a half hours on the train to London. It's an hour and a half or an hour on, on a plane. You know, the rest of the UK is there and the rest of the continent, frankly. Yeah. I would encourage people to make sure they duck their head out and, and see what's happening elsewhere. Yeah. So uh, thinking of challenges, um, going back to kind of the micro level from, from your point of view, um, just in, in, in running your business. What are the things that you are thinking about um, for, for the next year that are particularly challenging? We are, I tell you our biggest challenge is um, resource. So, um, <laughs> we, so we, we've never taken any outside investment. So mm -hmm. we, uh, so every, all our kind of, all our revenues are organic. And yeah. so that can make growth quite slow. Um, and that's quite challenging. And the other one is building a narrative and story that encapsulates the kind of movement of what's happening and that our events are the convening place behind that. Yeah. Um, but in, to move away from a focus of just talking about the conferences and the programs that we run, sure. we need to be talking about the movement that we are all part of and that we're just, you know, one paddle of, of the kind of flotilla of, 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 of boats is the way I kind of see it. Um, I would like us, our, us to adapt our kind of communication there. Um, we're also relaunching a kind of whole new website, a new uh, kind of logo design, brand design stuff. So mm -hmm. we've got big plans for kind of transformation. Um, but this always takes so much longer yeah, than exactly. you ever could have imagined it would. Uh, I think we're probably nearly a year behind where we'd like to be um, on, on that. But yeah, when you, we're, we're a team of eight at the moment. Um, yeah. And that's not a bad core team. Um, but I think we're going to have to work out an innovative way of, of resourcing better. Yeah. How um, does that mean... Um, that you are considering like taking outside investment and, and, or, or, or changing your, your business model in, in a way to, to try and support that. Have you, have you thought about that? 
We've thought about it. Um, I, at the moment, I'm not looking for a VC. Um, the reason why is that we have, we've been quite successful in raising kind of corporate money. Um, yeah. And I actually think that we could probably raise more corporate money um, without having to give away any equity. Um, I reckon we could do some deals that are, that are uh, meaningful that could help us there. Uh, we also need to think of how we continue to add value uh, online as well as offline. And so I'd like us to think of some ways in which we can engage with a community on an ongoing basis and that the, our events are the convening place, but there has to be something that's happening outside of just those conferences. Definitely. Cool. Great. Finally, um, uh, any kind of uh, uh, highlights or, or, or shout outs of um, companies that you think are doing a really cool or interesting or different um, type of job, whether it's in Scotland or, or elsewhere, anything that you've read about, you're just thinking like, wow, that's actually, that's quite different. Um, Surprise you with that one. Sorry about that. <laughs> that's okay. There's, um, the thing is, there's so many companies that I really admire. It's quite hard to pinpoint. Um, I, so one of the companies that's on our uh, Silicon Valley Accelerate program uh, is company Care Sourcer, which people in Scotland yeah. I'm, I'm sure will be well familiar with. Um, I think there's just a beautiful simplicity in what they're doing um, that I really love, you know, matching people who need care with those who provide care. It's like, yep, that makes really, really good sense. And it's such a big problem that they're solving. Yep. Um, yep. And in a, a similar vein, uh, there's a company called TickX, which is actually based in Manchester. And again, they're doing something beautifully simple um, where they're, they're a, a comparison site for tickets to music and events. And it sounds like this is a little bit like Ticketmaster, but it's actually an aggregator that pulls Ticketmaster and all these other right. places into one space. Um, and again, you're kind of like, why hasn't someone done this years ago? <laughs> um, and the thing I love about these companies is it's the way they're building. It's the culture that they're creating inside. It's the kind of, it's the founders and the leaders seeing a lot of good things, pushing diversity. Um, and yeah, just building a culture that is much more regenerative that, mm -hmm. that, that I like to see while still proving you can, you know, I think here, source of race, what, like eight million pounds or eight million dollars recently. You know, they're building a significant company here, um, and yet I, th I feel like they've got purpose at their core. Yeah, definitely. Well, cool. Well, thank you very much uh, for taking the time for for speaking to us, and and yeah, wh wh where are you off to next? Uh, next, I have a meeting this afternoon, and then we have a session that we're doing with our Silicon Valley cohort. Um, which is kind of like a team building session, getting everyone ready. It's the first time everyone's going to be uh, together before we head out in April. Cool. Cool. In April. Awesome. Well, great. Well, best of luck. And thanks. Thanks again. Thanks so much, Rob. Cheers. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.